Okay, well, my name is uh, Jaroslav Mraček and I would like to present uh, some news about the NF5 project. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer to give me that opportunity to share our progress with the DNF5. And, well, nice progress. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Did not finish. Well, what you will hear. First, I would like to provide some infra uh, introduction. Then there will be section related to the DNF5 features. And the last part will be uh, Fedora release plan. And I, ho I hope you will enjoy it. Well, the first slide is quite simple. And I think you already heard at least few of these components. DNF as a uh, software management tool from the command line. Micro DNF, this is the light version of the DNF, mostly suitable for the uh, containers. And package kit. Package kit, maybe you don't know it, but uh, maybe you use it when you use the GNOME software. Yeah, this is the backend for the GNOME software, for the RPMs, or even for the other content. Well, it looks quite simple. All of these three applications has one library, the DNF. But let me just look inside what is there and maybe you will be surprised. Because libdnf, it's not one library. Originally, it was two libraries. Libhiv, it was the library uh, for the package kit and the whole kit. That's DNF library, C library uh, for the handling, solving, and so on. Therefore, this is two libraries that were merged into one envelope. Of course, when such things happen, what's the plan? Merge everything internally. It's a good plan, and we start to do. We move as much of a logic what was possible from the DNF to the DNF library, and also we try to merge internals. But then, well, what usually happened? Compatibility. I mean, you cannot change many, many things in the workflows, in the behaviors, because more and more application depends on you and each change in, uh, in the behavior and in the interface or API means breakages. As you can also see, plugins. Plugins, this is one of the examples of this issue. DNF has its own Python plugins. And there is also plugins for the libdnf. Why? Why do we have uh, two sets of the plugins? The answer is quite simple. There is very low uh, intersection between DNF and uh, part that is used by the package kit and micro DNF. There are some overlaps, but not many. And plugins has access to everything in the DNF. Also, uh, plugins for the Lithium, they have access to the let's say, repository configuration and so on. But each of the parts stores in the different structure. Information that are stored in the Python classes and so on are not accessible by the C code. Therefore, you can do whatever you like, but you cannot share these stuff. Therefore, there is no way how to have one plugin that will work for the DNF and also for the package kit. With this structure, also, you can be sure that if you have some issue with, the, for example, microDNF, this issue will be more likely reproducible with the package kit than with the DNF because of the code duplicities. What we can do in such a situation? Well, we can start with, the, let's say, breaking API. It means to announce that we are not going to support the, the same API that we are going to change. In this case, it opens also the uh, room for the additional changes. Like you have a minimal set, I mean, you want to share something, then okay, well, it will be not compatible anymore. Then okay, well, let's improve it a little bit more because it will provide more value to our users. It means API users, command line users, and I think if we are going to break something, it means let's use it fully. Well, let's start to talk about the DNF5 components. As you can see, I try to 
split the DNF5 components into three parts. The first part is the DNF5. DNF5 is a replacement or will be replacement of the DNF and microDNA. Okay, this is two different tools. Uh, they are based one on the Python, the second one is written in C with the glib, and right now there is a replacement. Also, there is the command line interface is similar but not the same one. Therefore, even from this, we cannot promise the 100% compatibility with the DNF or the microDNA because we are going to replace multiple tools. What's the benefit of the replacement? DNF5 is written in C++, therefore we don't need a Python bindings. Well, Python is a nice language, but you know, if you need to install it, well, it requires a little bit more space. It means that microDNF was designed for the container. Why? When we have a DNF, it's much more powerful because we need a smaller size. Install size of the <coughs> microDNF is 115 megabytes or something like that, without big dependencies and so on. The install size of the DNF is 165. It's a significant difference. And with the new DNF 5, we will have the same footprint, like a microDNF, but we will try to provide the same set of the functionality with the DNF. Therefore, it's a win-win situation. We have a same set of the functionality, but with a smaller install size. DNF daemon. Why we have a DNF daemon? Or why we plan a DNF daemon? Because we already have a package. Well, everyone is happy. Okay, no, but well, that's another story. Because DNF5 daemon will provide more features. Package kit is unable to handle comms groups, modules, because it is not important for them. But there are other components that require to handle also the comms group and uh, the modules. Therefore, this is opportunity how to fill the gap. It will also replace DNF daemon. DNF daemon is a, a daemon uh, written on top of DNF. It means it is Python application. And the new DNF5 daemon will be small because it will not require Python. And as you can see for the DNF5 and the DNF5 daemon, they will share libdnf5 plugins. It means one plugin to everyone. It will provide the same behavior. It will provide the same set of the features with only one plugin for win-win situation, I guess. The last thing is the library. Library, as I already mentioned, will provide a plugin interface and also it will provide the bindings for the multiple languages, not only Python, like we have right in our stack, but also we plan uh, to provide additional bindings to the other languages. But it depends on the requirements and on the support from the community, because I, I can be honest, well, I'm not familiar with the Ruby and Perl, therefore we can provide the bindings, but we don't know how to test it even. Therefore, well, if th there is anyone who has an interest with the additional bindings, please reach us and we will be happy to cooperate and to provide the bindings if there will be requirements. Features, features of the DNF5. I already mentioned, okay, that we have a plan to provide lightweight uh, tools that uh, will have, uh, let's say, footprint like a micro DNF with the same feature set like a DNF. Well, another story, is the fully integrated and modularity in DNF5 workflows. Well, that's maybe surprising because modularity is supporting, uh, is suppo uh, there is a support in DNF, in libdnf, in packagekin. Why it is not integrated? Well, the modularity huh, requires uh, huge changes uh, in uh, how uh, this new content must be processed. Therefore, it is there, but this is just like addition to the original workflows. Therefore, with the current API, you can do things incorrectly. That's not good. And usually you realize it not easily because you, will, you start to install, for example, packages 
from the formal modules that are not available anymore, and so on. Therefore, this is the place for the improvements to have a modularity fully integrated in our workflows. Another message, modularity will still stay in Fedora. It is important part and they are users. Therefore, we must integrate it because users need it. Well, the next part, the next new part is uh, DNF daemon, as I said, support of the comms groups and the modules. The next part is a safer API. Well, what it means? Let me use two examples. The first example is related to the configuration. DNF, any time, any plugin can modify configuration. That sounds good. But it can also modify the configuration, which is not any more uh, important. For example, uh, one of the important uh, settings, install. It means where you have to work. Well, you can modify it even after everything is loaded. Therefore, well, you will see the setting, but you will use the different uh, location because it was already applied that setting. In DNF5, after some of the, uh, after some configuration is used and doesn't make a sense to change it because it will not affect the original setting that was used for some process, it will, it will get locked. It means you can easily get the information that you as a API user, as a programmer, you did something incorrectly. And you know, the sooner you get a message, sooner you can fix it. Otherwise, you think that everything is correct. Yeah, and unfortunately, well, your new setting is not applied anymore because you <coughs> change it at the incorrect, in the incorrect time. Another part is related to the modules. As I said, modules are not fully integrated in DNF4. They are, there is a support, but if you will, pro, uh, if you will request changes in the modules in incorrect time, then uh, it will, you will not get expected results like from the DNF. It means everything that is, uh, if it's processed into one transaction process, then internals of the new library will ensure that everything was performed correctly. Okay, the next part, performance import, in, uh, improvements. Let's start with uh, loading of repositories. In DNF4, I'm sorry. Okay, once again. Well, in DNF4, what you can see from the interface, yeah, DNF starts to load the repository, yeah, you see the progress bar, at the end you see, yeah, some time it waits, okay, no one knows what it does, what we know. Yeah, it's, it protests the download to the metadata and it converts the XML to the uh, format uh, that is understandable and accessible by server. Well, and then another repository. In the DNF5, we download the repository and when the download of the first repository finish, we continue with the downloading of the second repository and the processing of the, of the metadata is performed in another thread. It's also good because both processes do not fight for the same resources. Download doesn't require much of CPU. And the conversion is very heavily required. There is a heavy requirement for the CPU. Therefore, we use more efficiently resources in the short time. That's great. More repositories, more benefit. Well, I also uh, would like to provide some example from the command line interface. The first example is with the repo query with one argument, and mostly the first example is as a, let's say, background test. It means it's quite similar. Uh, but if we will use uh, more arguments with the DNF file, you see the significant difference in required time. It means each of the requests, each of the query for the, for the argument requires shorter time. 
Another example with the upgrade command. Well, again, yeah, with the more arguments, you see the significant difference. Okay? No one says that no one will use it, but there are tools uh, that use a lot of queries, like infrastructure uh, with the DNF, and they will see the difference. This is not what normal users do, it's correct, uh, but I just tried to use a general example visible even from the command lines that you can you can try to test and you can see the difference. Well <coughs> another important feature is the integration of the plugins into DNF5. You can you will be quite surprised how often it happens that you know usually third party team or uh, third party uh, plugins are usually written in Python. And everyone say, okay, no, DNF, that's, that's the main uh, software management tool in Fedora, RHEL, and so on. Well, later on, most of these teams get, are surprised because PackageCon, PackageKit does not reflect these changes. And, okay, it's not uh, visible from the first time, but the sharing of the plugin and unifying uh, behavior in our environment, that's a huge benefit. It's usually overlooked because people think that uh, you know the package kit doesn't require this and then and so on. Later on, most of the people uh, find out that okay, well, it's not true. Some plugins, for example, modify paths for the repository to improve performance in some environments, to modify variables or uh, to lock uh, processes uh, externally for example, and then they, they discover later on that, well, there is a gap. Someone does hear something and you don't know why, what, uh, or it doesn't work, because simply the plugin is only applied for the DNF. Well, it is like that. Well, outputs, also we will improve the outputs. And in this case, we can say that DNF5 is more, uh, uh, more similar with the uh, information provided uh, with the uh, micro DNF micro than the DNF. Because in this example, we also track the original changes or original uh, version of the original version of the package. Why it is so important? Some users probably. Uh, uh, check whether the jump between the versions during the upgrade is a small one. For example, if the only you know the release stack change, okay, you, you usually don't expect uh, much changes. Rather than you see, okay, the major version of the of the of the uh, component change. Well, that's the alert. Well, something maybe is changed, or then I can look for the change log. Therefore, it pro the version sometimes provides more attention for the some uses that they feel it is quite important. Okay, let's jump to the next part of my presentation and it is a release plan for the Fedora. Well, our first release is planned for the Fedora 38. Well, I know that we are now in the process of the Fedora 37, but you know, Rohai is alive. It means Fedora 38 is alive. What we want to do? We want to release the DNF5, and at the same play as time, we would like to obsolete micro DNF. Okay, don't be scared. Micro DNF will be still present in the repository, but they will be obsolete. Therefore, we will try to replace the micro DNF to ensure that our stack is available to the users that want to test. Also, uh, to make a minimal damages to the Fedora. Because, you know, it's a new component, we have a good CI, many tests and so on, but be sure, users are very, very clever in uses very rare cases, and they are only guys that prove that your component work. Therefore, it will replace in container, it will, uh, micro DNF uh, will be replaced in containers, it will be available, library will be available. Therefore, people who 
wants to, for example, start with the building of the plugins and so on, yeah, they have the uh, possibility to test. And of course, if it's released, then you know it's much more easier to. Uh, it's much more easier for the for the community to start to interact with the project. Okay, ah, there will be a compatibility. I don't say one other compatibility because, as I said, in future DNF5 will replace not only micro DNA but also DNF. And there are differences, and we also want to, you know, get rid of some historical things like some aliases that no one use, commands that are not used, and so on. Therefore, well, expect changes. But if you don't like, don't hesitate to contact us. Bugzilla or any other tool, Jira, so who cares, is a good place to put your requirements. Well, and not only, uh, we will not provide only, uh, not only microDNF syndromes, but commands and most of the options of the microDNF. Not many, therefore we have uh, not much to do. Therefore, we will release more. We will release more functionality, some functionality, for example, that is not from the DNF. Well, release brokers. Why we don't have a DNF5 in Rawhide right now? It's because the modularity, yeah, it's not yet implemented or fully implemented, and also internal history DB. Both of the things are critical. The first one to ensure that people will see the same behavior like with the DNF, when the modules will be enabled, therefore it's critical. The second <coughs> part, changes in the uh, layer where we store some internals. It's again one, quite difficult to, to do it during the, uh, during the time because you need to convert from the one version to another one. And if you do it twice or third time during the short period, well, uh, that's how. Okay, the next plans. Fedora 39, and we would like to present uh, DNF5 as a main software management tool for the Fedora 39. What it means? It means that we have to somehow replace a DNF, and in such a case, we again need to provide a compatibility. Because, well, we should not force people to, let's say, learn new uh, binaries that must be called. Let's use a DNF still. DNF, microDNF, and DNF5, everything will work. But again, there will be not a 100% compatibility. We will try as much as possible to support the common user cases, the most used commands and the options, but there will be changes. DNF5 is not a DNF, it's a different tool. And as you can see, while well, there is a proposal for the Fedora 39 change, okay, it's not yet applied, and I, but I will do it quite soon, therefore you can revisit the page. You can visit the page. Well, so let's jump to the, well, if I'm here, I can also introduce our DNF team. Well, the first on the list is Aleš Matej. Aleš Matej is the expert for the Create Repo C, and also he implemented uh, <coughs> Uh, part related to the advisories to the DNF5. The next uh, is uh, Jan Kolarik. Jan Kolarik is our new DNF uh, member, therefore we are welcome him and we hope that uh, he will enjoy the stay in the team. Well, the next guy is me. Well, <laughs> I am a team lead and also I participate on the development of the RPM queries or the stuff related to the Lipsolve. Yaroslav Rohel, well, he's the guy who implemented in DNF5, comms groups, uh, RPM transactions, uh, no, sorry, not comms groups, configurations, repositories, uh, and, um, and RPM transactions. <laughs> Lukáš Hraský, He's the guy who is developing the history DB and the system state. And Marek Blaha, he's leading the development of the DNF5 daemon. 
Nikola, Nikola, he also, Nikola Sela, he also participated on the development of the, of the demon. And the last but not the least, Pavla Kratochilová, well, he, uh, <laughs> uh, well, she implemented Comps Group, she's now working on the implementation of the modules and the other stuff, yeah. Well, here are some links for the upstream repository. Our upstream repository contains all three major components, this means libdnf 5 DNF5, DNF5 daemon, also uh, we have a copper repository with the unstable uh, with the unstable RPMs. I'm saying unstable because please don't use it for the production. It's then up to you. And also we have a documentation for the DNF5 daemon. And that's it. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for the listening. Any questions? Go on. What, what, uh, what's the purpose of DNF daemon client uh, command, like regarding comparing to uh, uh, micro DNF and DNF itself? Well, uh, DNF daemon provides a DBus interface. Therefore, you can use any language that you like. You send a message over DBus, and we receive it and we process it. That's the purpose. So it's just wrapper about the DBus. Yeah, yeah uh, well, yeah. that's, uh, yeah, uh, it's not a wrapper. I mean, we provide a server side, and uh, DBus is the only the channel how to communicate with the other side, the client. We also have uh, some testing client, but so it's, it's not, expected. not supposed to be used by normal user. No. Okay. No. But uh, uh, even for the testing, we need to provide a client mm -hmm. like uh, the package con exists in the, uh, for, the, for the package kit. Because, uh, you know, this is the only way how can easily reproduce something that happened over the years. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Go on. Is there, will there be a difference of the level of the API between libdnf and the dbus daemon? Or Let's say I want to install a package. Will there be like a dbus method install package? And then will the library have a function called install package? Or will there be like a difference between the level of access to the details, let's say? Well, uh, it's a good question. <laughs> ah. Well, first of all, I. Uh, well, we can expose most of the functionality uh, through the DBus. Of course, the names, I mean, the, the messages will code slightly different, but the functionality can be exposed. What's the problem with the DBus? I mean, transferring of the huge data. I mean, you will have to somehow pack, somehow send it, somehow, you know, unsend it, therefore, you cannot transfer the structures. Uh, but if you say, well, most of the things can be achieved using the daemon as well from the API. Depends on the, let's say, requirements. There are some limits, but if there will be, uh, let's say, requirement to expose something, I mean, you cannot blindly, you cannot, anything what we will support on the server side, well, then uh, we can use, uh, if there will be a requirement from the AP or from the DBus user to expose something, we can add it. But of course, it doesn't work uh, reverse. Like everything that is an API is directly accessible through the DBus. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I was more asking about the level because I know that using hockey and the, the Python API for DNF and using the DFN, DNF as a command line tool is like completely different. There is no, like you do DNF install Emacs, but you don't have like a single function in the API to install Emacs, like which would be like install and one string or uh, yeah, like a... Actually, we have it in uh, DNF uh, for uh, uh, 
uh, in the Python part. Yeah. There is a function that works like that. Yeah. It's not part of the hockey. Yeah, but will it be in libdnf function? Yeah, sure. It is there, because yeah. as I said, we try to move as much functionality from the all sides to the library, because this is the only way how to share as much as yeah. possible. Cool. You know, we are lazy guys, you know, we don't want to write things twice. This is good. Anyway, some level of laziness. Any other question? I Go on. Comment, because Go on. Go on. A question. I, I, I want to say that I used the Cocker DNF and I, a while back, and it just seems to work already nicely. So I, I think it's, I mean, mm -hmm. it's usable. It's not really experimental. You can just install it. You mean DNF5 or DNF? Yes, DNF5. Well, it's experimental because there is no support of the modules. Therefore, you know, the modules are part of the RHEL and the Fedora. I'm not saying that it is by default enabled, but the users that uh, use modules, they will get uh, in, in trouble without the support of the modules because the next upgrade will change the versions in unwanted versions and, well, let's say, call it freely, is it will be disaster. And that's why uh, we have to wait until the rudimentary support of the modules will be present in the library. Yeah, that's the one very, very critical uh, critical point for the for the release of Fedora because we have to we, we are on the level where we sh we cannot guess. We should predict the all possibilities in advance because we like our users, and then hopefully they like us. Or at least not hate. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, very comment. I hope that in, let's say, one month, there will be a release. But it's roughly less. And of course, if the release will not appear before the Christmas, I think the FESCO will start to complain. <laughs> be sure. Plans are plans. That's. Any other question? Well, anyway, time is already over, I guess. Thank you. Thank you.